My name is Gloria Ulupsi um, and I am from Rankin in Nunavut. I am Inuit beneficiary under the Nunavut Land Claims Agreement. My name is Isabel Kruger. I am Soto from Muscopee First Nations. I live in Moosha with my adopted family. I am Clara Kruger and I am Isabel's adopted mom. I am a white settler living in Treaty 4 territory. This piece of song was created in the higher Arctic where the sun disappears for six to seven months of the year during the winter. So this song, we would use the song as a celebration song um, and welcoming the return of the sun. Kaumati Lugusuli, the song Gloria just sang, is a perfect metaphor for where we are right now as a nation. The darkness of the residential school era is now over, and the light of the truth is beginning to dawn as we walk forward together towards reconciliation. Hello, and welcome to our response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's final report. We feel that we are called to respond and be responsible to what we have read. Part of our response to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report is in the spirit of reconciliation. In the report section on reconciliation, they define reconciliation as being about coming to terms with events of the past in a manner that overcomes conflict and establishes a respectful and healthy relationship among people going forward. They go on to write that in order for this to happen, there has to be an awareness of the past. Acknowledgement of the harm that has been inflicted, atonement for the causes, and action to change behavior. But we are not there yet. The relationship between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal peoples is not a mutually respectful one. But we believe we can get there and we believe we can maintain it. Our ambition is to show how we can do that. Reconciliation is a process of healing within oneself. Healing starts within yourself. Healing is to come to terms with your negative experiences and battling through them. In order for healing to begin, we need to start talking and having discussions about our past with our spouses, family members, and most of all with our children. We need to teach our children the history of our past so that they know who they are and where they come from. It is crucial to break that silence of our past as it will enable us to heal deeply within ourselves. It will allow us to move forward with strength and peace within ourselves, our families, and the people around us. From here on, it is important to forgive and to make the best of building new relationships. By doing so, you will get the best of both worlds, the traditional way of life, combining it with a modern way of living, it is so important to work together as a nation with one, other, with one another for a more prosperous future. Reconciliation is telling our story to our children and, their, and our children's children. Um, we should forgive but not forget. I recently discovered that both my parents went to residential schools in the late 1950s and early 1960s. When they shared with me their experiences at the residential school, I couldn't believe it. I was blown away by what they were sharing with me. I asked them why they never talked about this ever before. They didn't reply as there was total silence. 
I now believe that residential school experiences have a huge impact, not only for the survivors, but also for the spouses, and most importantly for the children. I encourage parents and children to communicate with each other. Stop distancing yourselves from reality, as it does not benefit anyone. I encourage people to ask questions and at the same time to understand and share your feelings with one another. My mom's mom went to residential school. She went to Gordon's. She survived, went home, had kids. She treated her kids probably really bad because my mom was taken away from her and put in a white home. When my mom was put there, she was quiet and didn't talk for a long time. I wondered why, and I came up with my mom. My mom's mom came back. She didn't know what else to do but have kids. But when she had kids, she didn't know what parents, parenting looked like or how to treat her kids properly. The residential schools treated her badly, so she treated her kids badly. So I think that's why my mom went mute for a while. Responding to Canada's history of residential schooling as a white settler who is only tangentially affected is challenging. I say tangentially because not a single one of my grandparents, aunts, or uncles, or parents was sent to a residential school. This does not mean, however, that I have not been affected. We all bear the burden of a history that so abused our neighbors and our friends, and in my case, my adopted family. Nonetheless, they were not my braids that were cut. It was not my body that was strapped. It was not my brother who was lost. I need to own our residential school history, but I recognize that I am owning it in a different way than my Aboriginal counterparts. Furthermore, I believe to truly know something, I must not only own it, but act on it as well. The TRC invites us into a relationship with this knowledge and history of residential schools. This video that we have made is one of my attempts to act on this knowledge. My reaction to the TRC report is to bear witness to show by my presence that this is true. I am also called to deliberately make space for Aboriginal voices and to listen. In Stephen Harper's residential school apology, he said that the burden of the residential school experience has been on the shoulders of Aboriginal peoples for far too long, and that the burden is probably properly ours as a nation. We are now joining Aboriginal peoples on this journey. Stephen Harper called for forging a new relationship based on renewed understanding and on respect to move forward together. So in this way, I am called, above all else, to extend my hand in friendship, tentatively, hesitantly, knowing that the past weighs heavily on this offer. The TRC calls us to build the relationship between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal peoples. Our ambition with this video is to show how we can do that. From now on forward, let us become one.